Hi, I'm Robin Shooter, founder of Empower Total Health. Welcome to this week's weekly update, which is about how all plant foods are not created equal when it comes to your heart. In last week's weekly update, I told you about the dangers of saturated fat for heart health, including for all those vegans out there who have enthusiastically embraced the coconut oil craze. The article that I referenced in that weekly update, which is called Dietary Fats and Cardiovascular Disease, a presidential advisory from the American Heart Association, cautioned that replacing saturated fat with refined carbohydrates and sugars did not reduce deaths from cardiovascular diseases such as heart attacks and strokes. So no good news for lovers of vegan cupcakes there. Now a new study on plant-based diets and heart disease sheds more light on which plant foods to eat and which to avoid if you would like to show your heart some love. The study included over 166,000 women enrolled in the long-running nurses' health study, which has been tracking the diets, the lifestyle habits, and the health outcomes of female nurses in the U.S. since 1984, and also over 43,000 men who were enrolled in the counterpart study for, for males called the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study. All participants were free of chronic disease at the time the study began. Ever since they were enrolled in the studies, participants have been filling out food frequency questionnaires every two to four years. And what the researchers did was to create three separate indexes from these questionnaire da data. The first was an overall plant-based diet index, the PDI, which simply assigned positive scores to foods derived from plants and negative scores to foods of animal origin. The second was a healthful plant-based diet index, the HPDI, which scored whole grains, fruit, fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, oils, tea and coffee positively. So you got, if you like, points for eating those foods. And juices, sugar sweetened beverages, refined grains, potatoes and fries, sweets and animal foods negatively. So if you ate those foods, you lost points. And then the third uh, index was the unhealthful plant-based diet index or the UPDI, which gave positive scores to less healthy plant foods and negative scores to animal and healthy plant foods. Here are some examples of how the researchers categorised various plant-derived foods. So what did they find? Those with a higher PDI, that is people who just generally ate more plants and less animals, had a slightly decreased risk of coronary heart disease. And this was defined as both non-fatal heart attacks and also fatal coronary heart disease, so dying of a heart attack or cardiac arrest. However, this association failed to reach statistical significance, which means that the observed association between heart disease and a more plant-based diet could have been due to the random play of chance. But those with the highest HPDI, in other words, people who were eating the most healthy plant-based foods, had a 25% lower risk of heart disease, which was highly statistically significant, a p-value of minus 0.001, which for the numbers nerds means that there's less than a one in a thousand chance that this was a random finding rather than a genuine association. And conversely, those with the highest UPDI, so this is people eating the most unhealthy refined plant foods, had a 32% higher risk of coronary heart disease, again at a p-value of minus 0.001. It's important to note that this was not by any means a study of vegans or vegetarians. Animal food intake ranged from five to six servings per day in the highest consumers to three to four servings per day in the lowest consumers. However, within this group of extremely carnivorous medical and, and healthcare professionals, the researchers found that, quote, even a slightly lower intake of animal foods combined with higher intake of healthy plant foods is associated with lower CHD risk, whereas there was a potentially stronger association for less healthy plant foods with coronary heart disease risk than with animal foods. In other words, you are more likely to suffer heart disease if you ate more unhealthy plant foods than if you ate more animal foods. Now that's a really sobering thought for junk food vegans who think that merely cutting animal products out of their diet will protect them against the leading underlying cause of death in Australia, that is coronary heart disease. But why? Here's what the researchers thought. Greater adherence to HPDI, the Healthy Plant-Based Diet Index, would lead to diets high in dietary fibre, antioxidants, 
unsaturated fat and micronutrient content. That's vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, and so forth. And low in saturated fat and heme iron content, all of which could aid in weight loss or maintenance, enhance glycemic control and insulin regulation, improve lipid profile, things like cholesterol and triglycerides, reduce blood pressure, improve vascular health, decrease inflammation, and foster more favorable diet-gut microbiome interactions, for example, through lower levels of trimethylamine and oxide, thereby lowering CHD risk. Greater adherence to the UPDI, the unhealthy plant-based diet index, on the other hand, leads to diets with high glycemic load and index, added sugar, and lower levels of dietary fiber, unsaturated fats, micronutrients, and antioxidants, which could result in higher CHD risk through the above-mentioned pathways. Now, personally, I dispute lumping the humble, much maligned potato in with unhealthy plant foods and including vegetable oils in with the healthy ones. After all, the only two dietary interventions which have actually been shown to reverse coronary artery disease, the Ornish and Esselstyn programs, specifically include potatoes and exclude vegetable oils. But overall, this study provides pretty good guidance on how to eat to keep your heart healthy. Fill your plate with fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes. Include nuts and seeds in moderate quantities unless you tend to gain weight easily, in which case you're probably better off steering clear of them most of the time. And keep the vegan donuts, the chocolate, the cupcakes, the fruit juice and the other low value food to a very occasional treat. Or better still, cut the vegan junk food out altogether and learn to make treats from wholesome plant foods. Now, if the thought of giving up your vegan junk food makes you panicky or you just really don't know how to make whole plant foods taste good, don't worry, I've got you covered. My Empower Ed Health and Nutrition Education program is packed with resources on how to implement a healthy, low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet. It includes video recordings of my full day empowered eating seminar and my plant powered oil free cooking workshop, Healthy Eating 101, which covers kitchen setup, meal planning, and batch cooking, and two live webinars per month, an open QA session and an in depth exploration of an important health topic. Your first month of membership is 100% free. There's no risk to you. So register at the link at the end of this video and get empowered to live your best life. And I will see you for next week's weekly update.